lots of studies coming your way. I'm doing a deep dive, getting prepared for more uh, presentations uh, to professionals and parents. Uh, this comes from a pediatric medical journal. This was from 2017. That was quite a long time ago. And this is about the establishment of nasal breathing and how it affects the uh, craniofacial or the head growth in children. A uh, couple things to point out here. Uh, chronic mouth breathing during active craniofacial development of a child may result in anatomical changes that directly affect the airway or how your child breathes. Maximum oral facial growth takes place during the first two years of life. By the age of six, nearly 60% of your child's face is fully developed. Early intervention is a thing, uh, and it can happen, and it should happen, especially according to this article, which goes on to further say that uh, mouth breathing in conjunction with other oral functions such as sucking, thumbs, fingers, tongues, swallowing and the way that they chew are critical functions that will continuously stimulate the intermaxillary cartilage, that's the upper arch, from birth until 13 to 15 years of age. More and more is said here, but here's what I want to point out. Nasal breathing during sleep is essential to stimulate adequate ventilation, activate reflexes that help maintain the tonicity of the muscles that stabilize that upper airway, not just the nasal cavity, the first third of the airway, but the middle third, the nasopharynx, oropharynx area, and to avoid the airway instability that results from mouth breathing. Mouth breathing creates airway instability, air resistance, increases, not oxygenating, not breathing well. Addressing mouth breathing during sleep is essential, considering that at birth, the child spends nearly 80% of the time asleep. And even at six years of age, they continue to have prolonged sleeping time where they can spend up to 25% of their day sleeping. Considering all this, it is therefore essential to address any problems such as chronic mouth breathing that contributes to poor skeletal and airway development in children. So right here, okay? I will be providing more and more information because Parents and healthcare providers need to know this. It could completely change a child's life.